Hey my loves, so welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I kind of want to talk about some self-care and tips on being mindful on how we use social media as well as consume social media as spiritual creators. So recently in the spiritual community, there has been some tragic news that happened and I figured at first I wasn't going to talk about it and then I was like, maybe I'll talk about it and now I'm kind of like, I have to talk about it. And it's because I'm realizing that some of the themes in that tragedy can have affected many of us as spiritual creators because it taps back into, you know, the fear of being seen, dealing with judgment online, um, maybe also being a mother and dealing with um, just life and emotions while also being a spiritual creator. So I'm going to be looking at my notes here and there, but I kind of just wanted to create a video talking about how we can help ourselves, um, but also still show up online. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that a lot of times when you are a spiritual creator and you are creating online, you are susceptible to bullies, of trolls, to people just being very, very mean and critical of what you have to say. Um, know that if you want to be a creator, you will have to learn to not take certain things personally. And what can really help you do that is studying the gene keys. For me in particular, the gene keys transmission, um, it's a book by Richard Rudd and I'll always link it. I always have it linked in my human design books on Amazon, but you'll see it linked below in this video. Um, it's really helped me understand human behavior and why people are the way they are. And also when we end up in frequencies or energies that we don't want to be in, what role we play in that. If someone's very reactive towards us, what repressive nature do we have? Um, of course, it's not always about that. Like people are just mean sometimes, but having that understanding of how you can control yourself, your energy, and just like deal with that energy is very beneficial. So I highly recommending, um, I highly recommend if you are a spiritual creator to start looking at the gene keys and start looking at ways of understanding human behavior so that you can have the why that you need and you don't necessarily have to continue maybe looking at people talk about you online or responding to trolls because none of that is going to really help you if you are a sensitive person but what can help you is understanding why people are the way they are and then learning yourself to minimize those situations where you deal with people that are toxic or negative next is the energy that you are choosing to operate and deal with so we know that if you want to paint the world in black and white there is good and there is evil um and that's just like very basic of course it gets much deeper than that and there's a lot of gray areas but i think at some point as a spiritual creator you have to know if you are dealing with dark energy or light energy and if you are someone who's really looking to um, help the collective and be a source of good in the world, then you want to be working with positive energy, light energy, which means that don't doing spell work, conjuring things, um, responding to people, throwing energy. None of these things are going to be positive or helpful for building positive community growing and changing the world the way that we desire to see it so it's really important to know what you're working with the energies you're working with for me in particular i really like decks like this this is wisdom of the oracle card or wisdom of the oracle deck um, by call it baron reed and she's made other decks she's also a popular um deck creator but working with oracle decks and working with decks made that you know are by people who are working with the light. I really love the Earth Warriors Oracle deck by Alana Fairchild. I like the True Heart Intuitive Tarot deck by Rachel True. <laughs> I almost wanted to call her like Rachel Mona because yeah, she's an actress and played Mona on Half and Half. But 
we can work with decks and people that we know have like, you know, a good reputation, qualities that we like. They actively show up in the world in a way that represents what they stand for. It's extremely important because when you are working with energies that you are not aware of, it can be very, very dark. And if you are in the awareness of knowing you're working with dark energy, then baby, all I'm going to tell you is we've seen the tragedies that come from choosing to be in the dark and not being in the light. And also when you choose to be in darkness, you attract more darkness. Um, so be mindful of that. Think about what you're choosing to do. There was a creator that recently passed away and it was people found out that she was summoning demons. Absolutely, summoning demons, demons is going to be a negative, um, cons there's gonna be negative consequences for doing something like that. So please be aware of that. Um, let me think. I'm like, what else do I want to say? Next is know that when you are growing in your following that you do not have to, you need to be grounded. You need to remember why you are doing this. Why are you creating this type of content? And what, who is it all going back to? Like, what is it for? If it is with, for your own ego, then you'll start to be in a space where you think you're more powerful and you'll start to try to control things. And we know that that is not how source works. That's not how God works. We cannot control God and we cannot control fate. So what happens is when you are ending, when you end up on an ego trip, you can start doing things that show or are seemingly you're telling the universe or God that you feel that you are more powerful than them, especially when it comes into meddling in the affairs of people's lives, choosing to do love spells, again, choosing to conjure things and put things on people. None of that is of God because God doesn't need you to do that. Like, let God handle things. And know that especially if you are a mother or someone going through a mental health crisis or knowing that you are low energy, I from I myself had experienced a water birth and I know literally a year after that, I was still in my rehabilitation and healing stage. So if I had pushed myself and had myself do way more than I can handle, and I was in a, vibration, a vibrationally low state, I opened myself up to that energy even more. And when we're in lower states of vibration, we can now be in a space of fear, guilt, shame, and that state begets more fear, guilt, and shame. And if you're making decisions from that space, if you're conjuring things and doing just like all these things from that space, the consequences are going to be severe. Next is showing up authentically. So sometimes it might be hard to say like, hey guys, I don't feel good or oh, I know my hair is not done. Like we might feel this per perception of people and it may want us to act like we're good or cover up our flaws, but the authenticity that your audience will feel and the people who are listening you will feel from you just showing up as you are as a human and going through life and saying, hey, I, I have to stop, close my books for readings because I wanna handle this family emergency. That will take you so much farther. And trust me, if you have to close your books for something like that and you chose to operate in integrity, know that God will take care of you in that time. And know that the universe, source, God got you, you know? Know that you don't have to push yourself past your physical limits because you're not God. Because what happens is when you start doing that, you start not being truthful because now you have to cover up your truth or you're, you're working when you're really on E, so then you're not really handling what's going on inside of you. And the reality is like your mental and physical health is, your mental health is your physical health. Even though you can't see if your brain is broken, it's still like physically or chemically something happening in your brain that's changing it. So 
prioritizing that first, know that everything else that is meant to come from that will come from that. So the next point I want to make is be mindful of who you work with as clients and also how many clients you take on. For me, I'm a human design reader and I also create videos online. So it's really, really important for me to ground my energy and prepare for those readings properly, but also know that when you're doing a reading or giving information that is esoteric or spiritual, you have to be able to hold space for the other person as well as hold space for yourself after these experiences because we are energy beings. So whether it's physically in person or not or over the phone, energy does transfer. And if you're not someone taking care of yourself and you're giving readings to people, you're putting them in a dangerous space and you're putting yourself in danger because again, we're working with the metaphysical even though we're physical beings. And that is important because we know that all throughout history, there's been shamans and gurus and spiritual teachers because many times they guide you towards the future and they're guiding the collective towards the future. But often if you are not aware of being grounded in the present moment and you're too busy trying to predict the future you can lose touch with the reality that you're in now and also just start seeing a reality that's actually not there and that i think is you know when it gets scary you know and when it's important to not be doing services um and it doesn't have to be that way, right? So this video is really about how do we prevent what can happen when we aren't grounded, when we are in our ego. Those two things can cause so much more havoc than going through the motions of sadness when you know we don't feel validation or when we're dealing with trolls. Like you'll realize that that ain't nothing that's part of consciousness evolving people are going to be upset and people are going to express their opinions but you have to trust in what you're saying next is understand the humanity of all people um for me i can be someone who is very very like when i meet you if i like you i'm like oh my god you're most you're the most amazing person ever and then oftentimes that person will show me why they're not the most amazing person ever. So being a reader, being someone who does spiritual work is really important to just see the humanness in all people. And that goes back to understanding that you, the equality in, in you and the other person, that you're both meant to gain things from the experience, you're both meant to learn and grow, and that it's not just um, you're superior to this person because you're giving them a reading or they're inferior because they need to come get a reading. We are all here to be in connection and to experience each other and to help each other. And understanding that and coming to that, um, coming into that with a level of respect will go very, very far, especially as a spiritual creator. Spiritual Spirituality gets so much flack because people tend to either judge people who want to hold that value system really strongly of being spiritual or you know it ends up being leading into religiosity or we have the other extreme where someone goes to the dark side um, because they're not in an understanding or a space to trust in the process Um, next is usually when someone is starting to go a different direction or show signs of, you know, unwellness, it usually shows up in their actions and the things they say because thoughts become words, become actions. So if you are someone who's creating or someone who's following a creator and you notice that their ideals or their values are no longer in alignment with what you believe, it is definitely okay to unfollow, mute, block, do whatever you have to do. Because especially if there is someone who is in their ego, 
they can be using your energy. Every time you spend hitting a like button or scrolling down their feed, you are giving someone energy. And if they're not in alignment, it's going into their ego. And it's boosting their ego to continue operating in the same way and same frequency. My baby just got home. <laughs> Next is know what you can sustain energetically. Um, and this is something I've had to go through and something I'm still experiencing. You can be someone who desires to be of service and help other people, but if it is too much for you, it is okay. I know right now I've built out so much that I can actually, I don't wanna say take a moment and chill, but I know that I had to kind of give myself a pacing for it. And even now I'm still trying to catch up. But part of that is because I just knew I had this desire to share information. So know that oftentimes as a spiritual creator, you might be balancing sharing information because you have this deep passion and need to with what your physical body, mental stability and all that is capable of doing. And it's gonna be for you to figure out what that looks like but try to find an intersection of those two worlds of reaching your fullest potential and allowing yourself to, um, as I like to quote the scripture, Philippians 4, 13, do all things in Christ that strengthens you, but also understand that you are still a human and even Christ in his human body had limitations. Next is remember that your mind cannot conceive power and that is a direct quote from a, the creator's mom who had recently passed away um, she said that in her twitter space remember that the human mind cannot conceive power so with that remember that you are a powerful being, but you cannot create your own power. You cannot talk yourself out of psychosis. You cannot talk yourself out of mental instability. Um, so the last thing you want to do is put yourself into that position because once you're in that position, it's not easy to get out like you think. You're, we're not these all-powerful beings that can just do whatever with no consequence. Know that we are, even me in this present moment, I am just a collection of my past experiences and past uh, consumption, like what I've consumed online, what I've like, what you're experiencing from me is my energetic um, expression of what I've like, how I've felt throughout the day. So remember that like we are still human and our minds cannot conceive power. Very, very important. So specifically, I did mention the gene keys already, but specifically gene key 20, the gene key about being present because it's about grounding. Um, and also the gene key 22, the gene key about grace, reminding us that we still are in need of grace. Of, and that is favor that comes from outside ourselves to bring things into form. So checking in with those two gene keys can be really, really enlightening and also can change your DNA because when you read the gene keys, the gene keys is based off of your genetic coding. So when you're reading this information, it can actually help change the way your DNA operates, which is a beautiful thing. Also, be authentic in how you show up online. And I've said that before, but I'm saying it again because another thing that um, came up was that this particular creator and other creators, you know, may not be showing the what's really going on behind closed doors. It's really easy to consume and be a consumerist and have really nice clothes and have like money and be able to do all these things and show up online that way but if you're focused on the outer appearance and not the inner appearance over time what is going to come out is the inner appearance so you can glam yourself up but spirituality is really about the heart and what what is in there and and I think that if we have more people feeling comfortable showing up as they are, 
then we won't have people feeling like they have to hide like what's really going on through vanity. So as vanity can really keep us from evolving because one thing I've noticed, and I will say as a small creator who's <clears throat> had seasons of growth, but for the most part, it, I'm still growing. A big reason I know that I'm still a small creator is because I don't do the straight up full on glam. And it's not that I can't. I mean, part of it is I can't. I have a baby. I have a life. <laughs> but it's a bigger part of it is because I have this deep desire to show people that like you can live a life where you can feel you can show up online exactly how you are in person. I don't ever want anyone to meet me and be like, "Ooh, she do not look like that when I see her on camera or what her, her Instagram pictures don't look like what she looked like in person. Um, but also know that like it's like the vanity metrics, like what I've noticed, especially after becoming a mother, women are conditioned to focus on their vanity, to focus on what they look like all the time. And when I look at accounts that have, are much bigger than mine, a lot of it is they have that aesthetic that people think they want. Like the YouTubers that make glow up journey videos and they're like beat face, beautiful hair, all of that is glamorous. And I do think beauty is a very big part of human expression. But I feel like it's really important to not let vanity keep us from self-actualizing. And part of that as a spiritual creator is considering yourself as a uh, a gatekeeper of, or is the gatekeeper the word I want to use? Considering yourself a leader and as a leader, if you want to tell people to prioritize their well-being over their looks, you should be doing the same. And that could be hard because looks are such a priority in this world and perception, so much perception is based on looks. But if, if I'm a creator and I'm, I come out looking like a baddie and I'm honest about my, when I'm not or I'm able to show myself either way, like show myself glammed up, glammed up and not glammed up, that's going to hold way more weight than someone who only comes online when they feel like they look the best and only want to sell a product to you. So think about that and think about people who you follow that might be doing that. Prioritizing money. If I see a spiritual creator that's always talking about money or always promoting services or getting mad at their audience for... Um, one thing I think is strange is when creators get mad at their audience for putting timestamps on the video. Because to me, if you're putting timestamps for the sake of optimizing that person's time watching, why are you mad if they're not gonna sit there and watch your whole 80 minute video? And when I say that, I'm saying it because I feel like sometimes spiritual creators want to just take people's time and not just spiritual creators, but creators in general sometimes can create things or do things to consume people's time. And then it kind of loses the authenticity of practicing mindfulness and consciousness and spirituality right? Because if you want to help people, you want to do it in the most effective way. And the best thing you can do for someone is help them, give them the information efficiently and mind their time. Because then they have that time to use and do all the things that hopefully you've instilled. Another thing is Okay, I'm, I am going to mention a few things. Another thing that stuck out with me that that creator's mom had said was, it's not what you look like. It's a waste of time to care what people think about. It's a distraction from your elevation and evolution. And I wanted to quote that exactly because it was very well said. But yes, when you are focusing on that, you are distracting yourself from your own evolution. I've seen so many women, and I'm speaking to women specifically. I know my audience is mostly women but man or woman, and we are prioritizing getting with a partner over our spiritual development and our vanity, then we are also blocking our elevation. 
prioritize your elevation and trust that everything else will come from that. Next thing is make a choice. Make a choice who you want to be in this world and then decide that you are going to continue showing up that way. I want to be a happy person, so I choose to be happy. I want to be a person that forgives, so I choose to be forgiving. When we make that decision, we create our world. We say, I am going to do what is for the best of me <laughs> or best in me. What am I trying to say? Um, I am going to do what is best for me because what is best for me is best for the world. Think about it like that. When you show up happy because you decided to be a happy person, you emit that happiness to everyone you meet. Your happiness shows in the vibration of your posts and the frequency of your ability to show up and in your energy. So prioritizing being the person that you want to help. No, not being the person you want to help. <laughs> Prioritize being the person that can be of service and help because you show up for yourself first. And lastly, I'm gonna end with trust the process of content creation and of being a spiritual creator. If you are trusting that you are adding positive positivity to the collective, positive energy into the world, trust that. And when you have that deep, deep trust, you are less likely to go down the path of um, paranoia, of fear, of distrust, of being highly suspicious. Because when you're a spiritual person, you're probably a very intuitive person. And intuition is very, very necessary for surviving life and for living life. But if we cannot balance that intuition with logic, then we can put our, we can be a disservice to ourselves and others. So here's a reminder to balance your intuition with logic, to um, be the person you want others to be to you, and to prioritize love over fear. Um, I would say that's the most important thing. So I hope this video and this contemplation helps you guys. It just like, I kind of like wanted to express that just because I feel like those are very real things that you can experience in the spiritual community and and it is any community especially when you're growing in this way on a, a platform like YouTube or even Twitter or whatever so it's really important to just be grounded and know that life is life is I am prepared. I have no choice but to have to be prepared for people coming across my content and not liking it. But I also am way more excited for the people who are coming across my content and loving it and relating to it and sharing it and commenting and giving me feedback on the good that it's brought them. So trust that. Trust that and let that be your guiding force. So I'm going to wrap this video up because it's already 30 minutes long and I'm not editing it. <laughs> but I hope it, this reflection was helpful for you. I hope you remember to stay in the light, to trust the process, and to prioritize love over fear. So I love you guys. Peace.